Welcome to the Lay and Your Bet Sports Betting Show. Got some more men's basketball here in the Olympics with four games on the slate to end the group stage for both groups A and B. So we'll be taking a look at all four of those games. I've got six plays right now. Already put those up in the Discord. So quick reminder to go ahead and subscribe to that. Uh, If you want to jump in there, it's free. You can get all the stuff we're talking about. Some really good looks from other people as well. Really proud to say. So there's a lot of good stuff in there. If you want to jump in Discord, link is in the description of the video. Same with a couple other promos. I'd recommend checking it out. I'll make sure that these picks are in the pinned comments as well let's go over the record and get right into it quick reminder props.cash is a great site to get all of your sports betting tools all the info that you need including men's basketball for the olympics they are probably the only spot that i've seen anyway that does have those stats up for men's olympic basketball always working really hard behind the scenes to get you everything you need number one tool that i'm using so i recommend giving it a shot Finally had a winning day on our third attempt at betting men's basketball here in the Olympics. So we are back up to minus 3.7. I told you guys we started out the playoffs last, uh, these playoffs in the NBA really slowly as well and managed to pick things back up after getting a little bit more data, which we now have seeing some action, actual basketball from these teams in competitive action, I should say too. The preparation games only could do so much to help us with what we're looking to bet on here moving forward. But we'll continue that trend, feeling really good about these six picks. Let's go ahead and get into it. First play is an under nine and a half points and we get even money to take Sergio Yule. I'm probably saying that incorrectly, uh, but we're taking him to go under nine and a half points because he needs to hit threes to do this. And now Spain is playing Canada. Don't feel like he's going to have the same success that he's had against much worse three-point and perimeter defense in the first two games here for Spain. I will say, you know, the the threes are really going to be it. So I I didn't really see very many good three-point props to go under for him. Really, the the way to play this is under nine and a half points, especially because you can get such good odds to take the points instead of the threes. Um, He's got to make threes to get the points, right? So if you look at the way he's played so far in the tournament, he went five for 15 against Australia uh, and eight for 21 total now, right? Three for in their last game as well uh but at this point you know for him like going up against canada you look at the the archetype of player that he is and the guys that have played canada already in this tournament that are very similar to that probably take patty mills a little bit of nick calathis mostly in like age and slow footedness if you will um but everything else for uh sergio yules is really all about getting those shots up from deep and with canada's uh the the wings that they have whether it's dylan brooks or lou dort i would imagine lou dort is spending a lot of time on on sergio here and then you've got uh dylan brooks who's gonna be playing against the taller aldama but probably just as strong if not stronger than santi aldama so both these guys not as confident in their points in the games come moving forward uh maybe aldama uh, way more than than you will hear but for the point of this like you like i said you look at the guys who've tried to do what he's done especially patty mills really good indication of what to expect here from you where he you know patty had eight points was two for seven from the field only got the five threes up and only hit one of them because he was super well contested by really good defense you've also got Nikhil alexander walker coming in who uh, is going to be able to do work as well on the wing and guard guys like you so the the guards should have a lot more trouble scoring against uh this this canada squad for spain especially you even money to get under 10 points for him first side or total that i'm going with in the tourney here and we're going over 168 and a half in this game spain versus canada uh, i really like the over 168 and a half here because you've got a situation where spain needs to either win or they need to keep it close right two third place teams are going to move forward into the elimination round right now that is spain and south sudan spain is a minus five point differential which is what matters here between these third place teams as they go head to head uh, in the standings to see who moves forward point differential matters the most right and so for uh, spain they're at minus five so they're the first third seed in south sudan is at minus six so they're the second team in, right? Japan is way on the outside looking in. They're at minus 24, uh, and they don't even have a win yet. So they're not likely to make it. It's really between, the, it's going to be South Sudan and whomever makes it in third place uh, versus uh, between uh, Spain and and also Australia. But Australia hold the tiebreaker right now with a plus seven point differential. So what that means here is that Spain uh, really needs to keep this thing close to guarantee that not only do they get move forward, They'd rather have the number one seed for the third place teams so they don't have to face the U.S., right? The U.S. is most likely going to be the number one overall seed right now. And as a result, uh, that's not the team that you want to play first in the next round, right? Because that's going to be whomever comes in second between these third place squads. So what we saw in the South Sudan USA game was that South Sudan knew all this type of stuff already, kept trying to score, kept trying to score. 
the total kept ballooning in that game as well. You saw Ant Edwards come back and score. Basically, all teams are going to keep trying to score down to the wire to make sure that they have as high of a point differential as possible. So that's really going to help us get over. And these two teams are already averaging 172 combined points in this one. So I really think this should be at about 171 and a half. We get three points of grace here in a situation where there should be a lot of, of attempts in the fourth quarter. Nothing's going to slow down and neither team is just going to sort of rest on, on the way that things are. They're going to keep trying to score to make sure that point differential works out for them. Time to eat crow with Josh Hawkinson. Over 11 and a half points. We just went under this number. That was against France. He proved that he can shoot the three. So he's been a really versatile dude for this Japan squad for a while now. Uh, and he has consistently gone over this number. He's also the dude playing the most minutes for them alongside Rui. He's now played nearly the whole game in both of the first two games for Japan. Maybe they're not going to try. They're, they're not in it for anything, but they're going to try. Like, they're still going to give it their all. There's still a lot of pride to play for. Would be awesome for them to get a win here at the end. And they're playing Brazil, which is a very winnable game. They're actually underdogs, but I do like them to cover here. And a big reason is Josh Hawkinson down low. Like, Bruno Caboclo, he's we're going to have a better game than he's had. He's been in foul trouble. He's played some really tough matchups, Germany and France, and it's been a struggle for him. But it seems like Josh Hawkinson's better than him at this point. He's had so much more success against the bigs of both France and Germany in the first two games because, in part, because he can score wherever you ask him to. He sets those screens up high, and then he pops and is able to get that three-point shot off really good percentage he made four or five uh in the last game versus france to help him get there against germany you saw him do it a little bit differently he didn't have a three-point attempt he was fine to bang down low with guys like daniel tyson company right and he had plenty of success there as well as he's now at, gotten 16 and 13 points in the first two games um and he's actually played seven games with japan since 23 24 uh in the uh the, the 23 FIBA world cup i should say right in those seven games five of them he's played at least 34 minutes and that's in part because the two games where he didn't play were more warm-ups uh qualifiers that types of stuff right and he, he hasn't really needed to play those minutes in the five games though that were competitive and he got at least the 34 minutes he went over in four of them averaging 22 a game so i still think he's being undervalued including by myself last game to be fair to myself, like I didn't think he was going to be able to hit four or five threes to get his points, and that's how he did it. He can still get points however you need him to get it. So I like his versatility. I really like the number at 11 and a half, even though it's minus 145. I would play this up to 12 and a half, but I would make sure that you get good odds anywhere from like plus 110 to plus 120 should be where you see 12 and a half points if you're going to take the over on that number. Sticking in this game, we're going to Yuki Kawamura, who put on a show in their last game where they did lose, obviously, against France, but his threes really kept them in it. Uh, he went six for 15 versus France behind the uh, behind the line there and took eight of them versus Germany. Also hit the three number that we see here for him. Now he's going up against Brazil, who just plays this sag off defense when you sort of uh, when he runs the pick and roll, which Yuki will do. You'll see a lot less guys coming out and hedging. Uh, they play, like I said, that drop D, which allows for open shots. This could mean that a guy like Yuta Watanabe is also good for threes. There really, really were no good numbers for him. Even to get three uh, still wasn't a very great price for Yuta. And, and I would expect him as more of a spot up shooter to have success in this game. You, you've seen spot up shooters uh, like the guys on France, Batum, especially three for nine in that one. And then um, Frank Nic 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 Latina, I never say it right. Uh, he's not going, he he's more of a spot up as well, honestly, like Yuki. So there's uh, examples of both. You, you look at the Germany game as well uh, versus Brazil, and you've got Andreas Opes, three for eight. You've got Dennis Schroeder, four for nine. Both those guys are different, right? Opes is more of a spot up guy catching that pass from Schroeder. Schroeder is going to dribble ha and then pull up off of that a lot more often, which is how he made uh, three of those four threes was off the pull up. So that does lead to, to some good numbers here for Yuki as well, who should have success against Brazil, especially, and will be taking in my estimation, at least another eight threes, like him to hit three of them for minus 113. Speaking of Andreas Opes, we're going to take a little flyer on him to get three plus threes in this game. Going to put a half a unit on it. It's plus 150. There's no good money here for taking over one and a half. It's like minus 185, minus 210. I believe you're getting some weird numbers on certain books, but I'm fine with taking the, the milestone bet of three made threes at least for him uh, that you find on bet 365. So what we're talking about here is like he's if you just look at his box score, you're going to see uh, some inconsistencies at times, but he has gone over in five of six on the, on the German squad this year. So far, uh, it doesn't include two warm-up games versus France. So these two teams did play twice in some in warm-up action leading up to this Olympics. 
But in one of those games, neither of the Wagner brothers played. France blew him out. In the other game, uh, Wemby didn't play. And Germany won by five in that one with all their guys. So this is the first time we're going to see them both at full strength. Obst didn't do much in that. They actually let other guys come in and get more minutes than him. Um, and really, though, when you need threes, this is the dude to call on. He's going to see those minutes go up, right? So just look at the, the games that he's played here. He played Japan now so far and only played 18 minutes, only put up two threes. Reason being, Germany's game plan was go down low against the much smaller Japan team, right? So they took 23s in that game, as opposed to like 34 shots in the paint, which uh, ended with them being at 53% of their shot attempts coming from inside the paint. That's a lot. And that's a lot more than the threes that they took. That's because that's how you score against Japan. Now you're coming uh, against a French team that is way more dominant and has allowed a lot more threes. As you can see, there's been a, a number of guys that have gotten their shots off, especially all those dudes on France, on Japan, rather, who just scored all those threes against the French squad. So with the uh, inability to get buckets down low for a guy like Tice or Mo Wagner, uh, even Voitman, like there's just going to be need to be a lot more shots taken from further away. And this is the man to do it, shooting like 90 percent of his shots from beyond the arc so we're going to take him to get three with a sprinkle of a half a unit in this one final play we're going back to the jock landale well over 22 and a half points and rebounds minus 105 on bet 365 feels like we're getting suckered into it a little bit but like i mean he's been soaring past this number so far in the tournament i've got to go back to it against a greek team that you know this is what i looked into yes he's done he's had the volume uh, in the first two games for Australia, and he's got the history of doing this when he gets minutes, right? In seven games with Australia this year, gone over in four. In those four, he's averaging 10 more minutes per game than the three that he went under. So 27 minutes per game in the four overs, 17 minutes per game in the three unders. Not that hard to tell what's going on there, right? He's very involved in the offense as well, which is a really big part of this bet for me. He's running a ton of pick and roll with Giddy. Uh, and ending either with a pick and pop, he's got a couple threes made, or really he's he's getting to the rim, catching that lob, or getting second chance points. Now, a lot of his points are second chance points, and you can say, oh, well, that, that's not going to be the case all the time. He got lucky on offensive rebounds. But the reason he's getting in position for those offensive boards is because he's rolling to the basket after the pick and roll. So any shot goes up, and he's already got momentum going towards the board, uh, and anything that comes out in the, right around that sort of painted area, he's already in really good position to get that stuff. So I think that's going to continue for him and then i also wanted to see how did other big men do versus greece and they've done fine they've done plenty fine i should say like teams that have traditional bigs like the spanish team who played aldama 29 minutes he had 31 points and rebounds combined then they played willie hernan gomez 18 minutes he had 18 pr and jock lando much more similar game to willie hernan gomez than he does to santi aldama probably a little bit more in between both of their finesse and power games uh and he can do it both though so i like his ability to score against greece uh and i think he'll continue to have success rolling to the rim getting those boards as well so we're going to take the combo here where uh he's gone over this number both times so far so we like it at over 22 and a half points and rebounds and that is all the time that i have for you in this one going to keep it rolling along get those uh picks for the saturday games as well that'll be the actual final day of group stage for group c all four teams playing in that one some stuff that matters so we'll be able to find some props and uh, hopefully get a bit more news out of the usa basketball camp to see what's going on there but we're going to pick this up look to be back into the plus here as before we get into the playoffs or the elimination round if you will so until i see y'all next happy betting